Sleepers 2.0 coming your way up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Tuesday, March 5th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Chris Towers. And let's just rattle off a bunch of names here, Chris, and we will start with you, Sleepers 2.0. Yeah, so on the full episode of the show, we let Scott have Jackson Merrill. Since he's not here, I will take Jackson Merrill. Jackson Merrill, top 20 prospect in all of baseball, top 10 on some lists, shortstop for the San Diego Padres. He is going to play outfield for the San Diego Padres. Not 100% guaranteed he's going to be an opening day option for them, but it really sounds like he's going to. And the, the primary skill set here is contact skills. Struck out less than 12% of the time despite getting to double A as a 19 year old or a 20, a uh, 20 year old last season. So very, very good contact skills. And he's someone that scouts have long looked at as a good bet to build power into his game. He's listed at six, three, 200 pounds. He's much bigger than you would think for a shortstop prospect. And last year at double A, he started to pull the ball in the air, had a ground ball rate below 40%. If he could do that while without sacrificing contact to the major league level, there is a chance that you get something like 15-15 with a really helpful batting average. His production, honestly, it, it could look a lot like what Xander Bogarts did last season, and he was a top 80 player uh, in fantasy. So I think Jackson Merrill has that kind of upside. And the ADP for Jackson Merrill is still outside of the top 400 picks, mm-hmm. both on Fantasy Pros and over at the NFBC. Sleeper for me is going to be Nestor Cortez. The ADP is 241.4 as the 66th starting pitcher off the board. He was limited to just 12 starts last year due to a strained rotator cuff in his left shoulder. It's a very serious injury for any pitcher. I wanted to see how he looked in the spring, and so far, so good. The velocity has been fine. He built up to 54 pitches in his latest start on Sunday. Sounds like everything's all right. He's bounced back fine from both of his starts so far. And the upside is really good ratios with over a strikeout per inning. We saw what he did in 2022, a 244 ERA, a .92 whip, just over that strikeout per inning. Uh, I don't think that he can, he'll can he come close to those ratios again, but... A low to mid threes ERA while he's healthy with a strikeout mm-hmm. per inning. I, I think that's totally doable here for Nestor Cortez. I usually pick him up as uh, an SP5 or 6 in a Roto League or as a bench pitcher in a shallower format. Chris, back to you with another sleeper. Well, I just want to say to help out your pro Yankees uh, agenda here, Pablo Lopez missed time with a rotator cuff in the 2021 season. He's been perfectly fine the past two seasons. Remember, that that was a big concern with him, and and I think he's gone over 180 innings each of the past two, so that helps the Nestor Cortez case as well. Uh, Another sleeper that I really like is Ty France, who there are other first basemen I like, including Anthony Anthony Rizzo, but Ty France is someone who's coming off a really, really bad season, hit 250, slugging percentage below 400. Max Exavilo was still 112.7 miles per hour. That's an 83rd percentile mark. He went to the driveline baseball facilities this offseason like J.P. Crawford did last year, and he estimates France that he added 3.5 miles per hour to his bat speed. I'm hoping he can tap into the power a little more consistently and just get back to 2021 and 2022 levels when he was like 18 to 20 homer, 160-ish combined runs in RBI while being a good source of batting average. I think Ty France can get back to that level, and he's not really being drafted as if that's the case. His ADP and NFC drafts in the month of February, I think, is like 396 Mm. right now. Yeah, so you can get him as a corner infielder even in the deepest of leagues. That Mm -hmm. is Ty France from the Seattle Mariners. And uh, I'm going to go with Michael Garcia, who there is talk right now that he could be the leadoff hitter for the Kansas City Royals. He hits the ball hard. He's fast. He looks like a great defender as well. 91.8 average exit velocity. You wouldn't expect that for a guy of Michael Garcia's skill set. He hasn't translated that into power yet, but he does hit a lot of line drives, which again will lend itself to a higher batting average. He's on a team that likes to run. So I've made the upside case for this year's Nico Horner, 270 plus batting average, eight to 10 homers, 30 plus steals. And if he's leading off, He can Mm -hmm. score 80 or 90 plus runs. So I think there's a lot to like here with Michael Garcia. It is an interesting skill set for a third base player in particular. So you probably have to surround him with either a slugging middle infielder or a bunch of other power on your team. But I do like the skill set quite a bit for Michael Garcia. Back to you, Chris. Another sleeper. 
Colt Keith, who is a consensus top 30 prospect in baseball. He was number 20 on Scott White's top 20 fantasy prospects list. He'll be making his debut as a 22-year-old, assuming I mean things would have to go terribly wrong for him in spring because he already signed an extension that bought out all his cheap years. So Tigers have every incentive to get him in the lineup as long as he's ready. Last year, across double A and triple A, hit 306 with a 380 OBP, 552 slugging percentage. I think he's got legitimate 25 homer power. He's able to elevate the ball and hit it with authority without sacrificing contact. And he hits the ball in the air to the pull side. That's what we're looking for to maximize raw power as well. So I think Cole Keith could be, you know, probably not like Brandon Lowe, Brandon Lau and Nolan Gorman levels of power production at second base. But I think he could be in the next tier without sacrificing much batting average. So, you know, 25 homers, 275 average. I think that's within the realm of possibilities for Cole Keith. Worth mentioning that he only has third base eligibility to begin the year on CBS, but again, will quickly gain second base. That is Colt Keith. One last name for me is Mason Wynn going outside of the top 350 picks in ADP. Feels like such a clear post-hype guy who was uh, one of the top prospects in the game. And last year in the minors hit 288 with 18 home runs, 17 seals. He's got power. He's got speed. He's going to be in the lineup because he is an amazing defender mm-hmm. for the Cardinals. So uh, I, I know that he didn't look very good last year, but I, I'm looking at a bounce back here, and he's just going so, so late. Uh, someone that, like Jackson Merrow, could potentially be a 15-15 bat this season. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye.